This content is for educational purposes only. What you do with this information is at your own risk. Thank you for watching. Enjoy. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be updating RetroArch so that way it supports the latest Switch firmware, which is right now 21.1.0. As you can see on the screen, I have uh, this RetroArch that has these red letters. The application does not support the current ABI. So we're going to go ahead and fix that. And with that being said, let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so this video is going to be a little bit more different than what I normally do with RetroArch videos. Normally, I like to delete the RetroArch completely off the SD card and start fresh. However, I got a comment recently asking if I can update RetroArch to support 21.1.0 without losing any type of configurations. So that's what we're going to do in this video instead. However, if you're going to start fresh or if you're going to try and update with the existing RetroArch, both setups are going to be the same for you you can follow along still i'm going to do exactly the same setup whether if it was fresh or if you're going to be updating so with that being said let's go ahead and continue okay so first thing that we can do is open up the sd card that we're using on the switch and if you have a previous retroarch like i showed on the beginning of the video that does not work we can go ahead and locate the retroarch folder and in here just to be extra safe because when you do a fresh copy of retroarch it should not overwrite anything that you have saved you should be okay However, if you want to be extra safe, you can save uh, files like the configuration files. It's just to be safe. Nothing should happen to it. Of course, if you don't want to follow yet, you can skip to the end of the video and see if it worked out for me. But if you also want to be extra safe, you can save any type of safe states. I don't have any here. Any type of configurations that you could think of, shaders, anything that you want to keep just to be extra safe and have them move to the desktop. That way you can put them back when you're done. However, I'm pretty confident that the new RetroArch just updates you know, the way it's, it's core and it shouldn't affect anything that you already have. Okay, so once you have taken out everything that you wanted from your previous RetroArch setup, we can go ahead and download the new version. So if you look in the description, there's gonna be several links. So one of them should say, click here to go to the RetroArch website. Once you're here, you're gonna to wanna to click on the download tab. And I think this is where I do something different than what people normally do, maybe. When people get to this area, they download from the actual links. And I like to download from the nightly builds. And sometimes it says here that uh, the nightly builds usually have more updated support. So I think some people naturally go here and download. But you have to scroll more down and click on this nightly builds section here. Once you're inside this area, you're going to want to click on Nintendo. And then you're going to want to click on Switch. And then LibNX. And here we're going to have the latest versions, which uh, you're going to locate the last timestamp and date that we have. So right now it's 1228. And the last timestamp of this update was 2113. So this would be the latest version. We're going to want to go ahead and click on this link. You go ahead and start the download process and after it's done uh, you can move it to the desktop i'm going to move it to the desktop just to keep things organized but now that you have the retroarch files we can just go ahead and use our zipping software to extract now you have to use 7-zip in order for this to work maybe other programs work but to make it with less issues as possible 7-zip will work just fine it's free and if you want to follow along with me you, I'll have a download link in the description to 7-Zip as well. But once you have 7-Zip, we can right-click and with 7-Zip, open the archive. And here we have all the files that we need to update the RetroArch. So all you need to do, once you open the archive, make sure you're on the root of the SD card. That's the empty space or the beginning of your SD card without being inside any folders. You're going to highlight all of these files and then you're going to extract them to the root of your SD card. So try and put them down here and don't accidentally put them inside of a folder. Okay, so if you have a previous version of RetroArch, you're gonna get hit with this replace the files in the destination, go ahead and replace everything in the destination and just let it transfer everything over. Okay, so once RetroArch has been extracted to your SD card, the next thing that we can do is put back everything that we took out of the previous RetroArch folder. So if you have your save states or your configuration files, we can just right click, copy everything that you have saved and then go into the retroarch folder look for this empty space area so that way you don't put it inside a folder and right click and paste 
So we're going to go ahead and replace any type of files like this. There we go. This is why I backed it up before because it probably would have replaced the regular one. So this is a good thing that we decided to take out stuff that we saved. I'm not so confident anymore from a previous statement. Here's some bonus uh, footage for those of you that are starting fresh. If you don't know where to put your ROMs, I like to put them in this area in the RetroArt folder. You're going to have a downloads folder. And in here, this is where I put all of my ROMs. It's a lot eas easier of access when you're trying to use RetroArt. So in here is where you would create your fo folders for, uh, I don't know, whatever you want to have as your uh, games. You probably already have this if you have it set up. You can leave it games or, uh, let me spell this quickly. Okay, something like that. And uh, you can go ahead and add your stuff. Unfortunately, this part, I cannot help you with that, but once you have it, you put all your files inside of here. Okay, so as far as your BIOS files go, there should be an area here that I usually like to create a system folder, but where did I see it? In cores? Yeah, in cores in the system, this is where you're going to put your BIOS. So I already have these in here from my previous setup, which is the Carlos Collection Pack. But once we put back uh, whatever we wanted that we saved, we can now go ahead and test it out. Let's go ahead and eject and I'll see you on the switch. Okay, so once you get back to the switch home menu, this part is really important. In order to use RetroArch without any issues and properly, you have to use RetroArch with HB menu without Apple mode. So if you do not know what I'm talking about, if you go into regular album, you enter your HB menu and you look at the top right hand corner, it says Apple mode in red. If you use RetroArch here, it will most likely crash and uh, it's not usable. So there's two ways that you can use RetroArch without Apple mode if you have any type of folders that go into HP menu or a title override. So if you want to do a title override, if you have no other options, you can hover over any installed title that you have that's working and enter it while holding the right shoulder button. So keep holding the right shoulder button and enter your title that's installed properly. Keep holding it until you enter the HP menu and you see the top red letters that there, there is no uh, applet mode. And if you navigate to RetroArch, it doesn't have those red letters either, which uh, shows that it's going to run. So what we want to do now is enter it. Or if you have the folder, you can go ahead and enter it as well. Either way, the folder does the same thing, just enters RetroArch without HP menu. I mean, without <laughs> applet mode. Go into RetroArch, and once you're here, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to uh, Online Updater. You also want to make sure that you have an internet connection already established. My Wi-Fi connection is already there. And we're going to want to do all these update files. So we're going to do update core info files. We're going to do update assets. We're going to do update controller profiles, update cheats, update databases update overlays and update shaders. Now, once you finish all these updates, let me move my head out the way. There you go. There's the load bar right here. Once you do all these updates, your RetroArch should be ready to go. Now, if you have lost things after all these updates, then you can go back to your desktop and copy all those things that you saved from your previous RetroArch setup and then Put them back in and you don't need to do the updates assets again this is a one-time thing but so far working just fine i'm going to do some tests after all these have finished updating and i'll show you that it's working so i'm going to let this update and i'll get back to you when it's done okay so after everything has been updated then you should be able to use RetroArch normally and everything should be working just fine but of course, if it doesn't, you can leave a comment down below and I can try and help you out as best as I can. Now, yours may look different than mine. This is because of my last configuration. But if it does still look like mine and you want to change it, I believe you go into settings and then go to drivers. And here I have the menu RGUI and I can change it to any one of these. Once you do this, uh, you have to do a restart and your menu will change or your look will change. So there you go. If you like this better, 
then uh, you can leave it like that if you like. Once you have something that you like, you can go to the configuration file and then just uh, save current configuration. That's if you want to. But other than that, everything seems to be working just fine. So now, uh, just to show you that it uh, looks like we're at RetroArch 1.22.2, but just to show you that I am on the latest Switch firmware, I'm using this RetroArch 21.1.0 with Atmosphere 1.10.1, .1, and everything seems to be working just fine for me. So let's go ahead and test some games out uh, just to show you that it's working on that end. But other than that, everything seems good here. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Let me know if it works for you. And any other type of questions about this, uh, how about the forwarder? If you're interested in that, you can leave a comment down below as well. And I can help you out uh, with that also. But other than that, thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next one. If you want to stick around, I'll show some, I'm going to show some test plays. If you want to stick around for that. Okay, so once you're back in RetroArch, you can go to load content. And here inside downloads is where you're going to find your files. And that's why I like to put them inside downloads because it's a, a quick directory to get to. But once you're here, you can just uh, open your folders. And usually they're in zip files, but I think uh, RetroArch can read both zip and unzipped, depending on the type of file that you have. So once you click on the file that you want, you can go ahead and locate one of the emulators. So I guess we can do this one, see if it works. Thank you. 
<laughs> totally beat up right now. Not 